What's up, everybody? Carolina Jackpot time. It's uh, August the 8th, 2018. Just a few weeks away from the kickoff to college football season. And I just about the title of this video. What I'm doing here is going down the South Carolina 2018 schedule. The schedule for the Gamecocks. And uh, trying to find that third loss. Um, Las Vegas has the Gamecocks predicted to go 7-5. and five. They have a seven-win uh over under on the Gamecocks uh, as far as a win total this year. If you've seen my prediction videos, I did in three parts on the Gamecocks back in uh, April and May. Um, you'll see that I disagree with that. However, that line uh, came out after the fact of me doing those particular videos. However, it wouldn't have swayed my opinion as you will see here in this video. Uh, when you look down the schedule this year, it's fairly manageable. And it's a regular uh, run-of-the-mill SEC schedule um, that's fairly manageable. Of course, there's the uh, non-conference tilt at the end of the year with Clemson, which is always a, uh, a tough game. But the other non-conference games are uh, not too bad. I was running down the list of this one here, and... Uh, See what we can do. They have us uh, at five wins. I disagree with that. I haven't done an SEC video uh, on the over-unders for all those teams. That'll come in a week or so. Been kind of busy and not able to make those uh, like I wanted to or in uh, quite as timely of a manner as I wanted to. However, there are two games on here that I would chalk up for the Gamecocks. Uh, as being games that I think are probable losses. My probable losses are going to come on September 8th at home against Georgia and on the road November the 24th at Clemson. Uh, Georgia, as I've made videos earlier, my trash talking videos uh, are a little bit different than my actual prediction videos. Uh, there's not a lot of homerism here. Uh, however, you know, Georgia returns uh, enough talent, I think, to uh, get the job done against the Gamecocks. You know, uh, just a little bit more depth. Uh, they did lose a lot of uh, skill players, uh, but the guys that are backing them up should be pretty solid. Uh, it's a, set, a week two game, which you know, and a home game, which could play into the Gamecocks' favor. It could play into the Gamecocks' favor. Uh, it's, it just all depends on how well Georgia gels throughout the month of August here in, in camp and uh, in their first game, which is against Austin P. Uh, not exactly a huge test for the Bulldogs in Athens. I have that one down as a loss right now. Uh, my mind may change. A lot of the Gamecock fans are really confident about that one, you know, and rightfully so. I just don't want to see a lot of overconfidence. Uh, the last game of the season, November 24th at Clemson, uh, it's going to be a tough game. Uh, I fully expect the Gamecocks to compete 100% better than they have the past two years. And I believe they will compete much more so in this game than they have the past two years. I just think Clemson uh, kind of got in their heads a little bit. Um, people want to give Jake Bentley a hard time for his never again speech and his, uh, well, they weren't that much better than us, if better at all. Uh, he's not all wrong. You know, everybody wants to laugh at Jake for that comment, but you got to look at last year on the road at Georgia. Lost 24 to 10, uh, put up a, a good effort uh, offensively. South Carolina didn't move the ball in that game. They just uh, really couldn't sustain anything. Um, and uh, the defense played well. It kept Georgia out of the end zone. But, and Quite frankly, uh, other than the Auburn uh, regular season win against Georgia, South Carolina played them tougher than anybody else did on their schedule during the regular season, except for uh, Notre Dame uh, in uh, game two, I believe it was. So there is reason to, uh, to not doubt that theory. They, they weren't that much better than you, if better at all. It's just the fact that they were in their heads. This year, they returned four. Uh, probable first-round draft picks against across the defensive line. Excuse me. Uh, it's going to be hard to run on this team. Uh, you're going to have to put the ball in the air against them, but then they have the outside pass rush. Uh, they've got a solid secondary. I wouldn't call it elite, but it is solid, uh, as evidenced last year. 
uh, against the Gamecocks. Uh, Jake with a really bad mistake in the first quarter of that game, uh, which led to an uh, easy Tiger touchdown. It was a really a momentum swinger in that game uh, right off the get-go. I expect a loss there. I expect South Carolina to keep compete. God, I can't talk today. To compete in that game, I think it's going to be like a two-score loss. Uh, but I think Muschamp's going to coach his ass off in that game because he knows he knows that the smiles are going to be on him. You know, even if he's if he wins a lot of regular season games here, that game he's got to compete in it. The other games. I'm really having a difficult time finding a solid loss here. One of these games I will call a loss. Now, people will sit here and tell you, well, Will Muschamp's going to lose a game that he should win at some point during the season. He's just known to do that. <laughs> History always repeats itself. Well, not always. Um, when you're improving, you're slowly building up a team, you're building up depth, uh, you're, you're recruiting well. Things are going to start going your way. That's not going to happen every year uh, all the time. So let's look at some of these games here. Coastal Carolina at home September 1st. That's a win. South Carolina has won 17 of their first of their last 18 home openers. Uh, I don't see them uh, stubbing their toe at home against the Shauna Clears in week one. It's just, it's just not going to happen. Uh, Coastal Carolina is not a very good team in, uh, what is it they compete in, uh, Sun Belt. They're not a good team there. That game is a win. Uh, you have a game at home on September 15th against Marshall. Um, this game, to be honest with you, Marshall could have a, a better team, and we could have more potential to lose to them than Vanderbilt or Kentucky or Tennessee. Uh, they're very dangerous offensively. If they can find a quarterback – uh, look out for Marshall. This could be a, a, a sleeper top 25 team. I still give it a win. They don't have a defense. Uh, South Carolina's new high-octane offense is going to exploit that. At Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt's going to fall off this year. Uh, they don't have a running game. They do have a decent quarterback returning uh, Kyle Shermer. I think he's a junior this year. Um, he may be a senior. And he has basically one ride receiver to throw the ball to. Uh, their defense will be decent. Derek Mason always has a good defense. He's a defensive-minded coach. But I give Carolina the win here. It's going to be a tough season for Vandy. At Kentucky, this is going to be an interesting one. Kentucky, uh, another team uh, looking for a quarterback. They have a really solid running back. Benny Snell coming back over 1,000 yards last year. Tough, hard-nosed runner. Um, I just don't know that that's going to be enough uh, for Kentucky to overcome, uh, you know, the loss of that quarterback position. Stephen Johnson was a leader last year. Their defense, it's always, you know, mediocre to a little bit above average. Uh, I think uh, Mark Stoops is a uh, defensive-minded coach as well. I just don't – I don't see them making uh, – what, five wins in a row against South Carolina. This is going to be one, a, a confidence builder. And it's strange to say a confidence builder with a win over Kentucky. But if they can get that monkey off their back, I think good things will happen. This is a, this is a must-win game for South Carolina. It is a must-win game for South Carolina, I repeat, to go to, on the road to Kentucky and win. It's not a must-win for Kentucky. It's a must-win for South Carolina. They've got to get a uh, – get a victory there, and I believe they will. October 6th to home against Missouri. I saw a preview video the other day predicting South Carolina to lose at home to Missouri. Uh, I don't get that. I don't know where they base that. Uh, I don't know where they base that from. Uh, Missouri, a very, very good team offensively. Uh, Drew Locke is one of the better quarterbacks in the SEC. Uh, but is you know is the fact that he that he's a great quarterback according to all these people just because of the fact that they put the ball in the air 45 50 times a game you know I mean what you know, they don't have they don't have a lot around him uh, Missouri's always was a solid defensive team but uh, uh, the, the defense now is just kind of kind of gone by the wayside and they've just I think adapted the strategy of uh, of trying to win games by uh, 
outscoring everybody. Um, which, you know, worked last year, the second half of the season, but you also got to look at the fact the teams they were beating were not that great. Uh, not that great at all. I'm going to give South Carolina a win over Missouri. It's kind of strange that they're not a very defensive-minded uh, team, being that uh, their coach, Barry Odom, was uh, the defensive coordinator there for a number of years under Gary Pinkle. At home at Texas A&M, October 13th, a lot of people are high on Texas A&M uh, due to the fact Jimbo Fisher coming in. Uh, never really been that high on Jimbo Fisher as a coach. I just always thought he was a really good recruiter. Uh, you know, he didn't have – if you'll look at it, a, a, a whole ton of success at Florida State, uh, other than when Jameis Winston was there. He went to uh, the BCS uh, National Championship game and won it in 2013. 2014, they went to the inaugural playoffs and got absolutely murdered by Oregon. Uh, other than that, he was a 9-3 and three type guy. You know, he beat all the teams that he should have, but uh, struggled against the, uh, the more elite competition. Texas A&M instilling a new offense, a new offensive scheme this year. Uh, that's a recipe for a five to six win team. I think South Carolina snaps that streak also and beats Texas A&M at home. Then we get a much needed bye week. Another home game against Tennessee, October 27th. Um, I like Jeremy Pruitt. I think that, uh, you know, of the 15 coaches that turned the job down, I think that Pruitt's uh, – He's got a more realistic approach to the game than uh, their former coach, Butch Jones, did. I think that uh, he will do some good things in Tennessee. I think he'll get them back to an eight, nine win type team uh, eventually. I don't think it's going to happen next year. I don't think he has the pieces in place quite yet. Um, but there will uh, start to improve in his second year. They're recruiting pretty well up there. I give South Carolina the win here. For some reason, I look for this one to be closer than what you would think. That's not going to be a blowout by any means. I think Tennessee will come in ready to play. But us coming off the bye week, uh, we'll be ready for that one. Uh, on the road at Ole Miss, November 3rd, uh, a lot of people are predicting this one to be an upset loss. I, I don't get that. Ole Miss, uh, by this time of the season, they're going to be beaten down. Uh, they don't have a whole heck of a lot to play for. They can't go to a bowl game. They can't win any kind of championships. Uh, so by November the 3rd, I think injuries will kind of take a toll on Ole Miss. Not that uh, we're pulling for anybody to get injured here, but the fact of the matter is there are always injuries in college football. They just don't have the depth uh, to compete with everybody else. They have a reduced amount of scholarships, and uh, I think South Carolina goes on the road and gets a win here at Ole Miss. Although I think they'll put up a fight against uh, uh, most of the teams they play, especially at the search after the season. Um, I see them as maybe a five, six win team this year. Uh, on the road to Florida on November the 10th. Uh, if you weren't, were looking at this and you wanted to pick anything else as a third loss, I might take this one. However, I'm not sold on them this year. They have uh, all kind of off the field issues. Uh, if Dan Mullins. Uh, you know, the, the, the coach that everybody says he is. I always thought Mellon was a pretty good coach there again. I don't know that he had a whole lot of disciplinary issues to deal with at uh, Mississippi State. Evidently, these guys at Florida don't know how to behave. They like to run around with frying pans and uh, fake assault rifles and uh, pool sticks and uh, belts and whatever else they take around for weapons there. I really don't know. Uh, but this is, has always historically been a tough place for South Carolina to play. They've historically not played very well at Florida. The only time, a memorable win there uh, in 2014 in Coach Muschamp's uh, last game against South Carolina um, as Florida's coach. We won that game in overtime when uh, Dylan Thompson ran out on the bootleg and scored from like the four-yard line and won the 2010 SEC East Championship at Florida. Uh, that was in Urban Myers last year before uh, for the, the heart attack episode. I'm going to give us a win here. Uh, not sold on Florida this year. Next year may be a different story. Then, of course, November 17th, the game against Chattanooga. I'll chalk that up as a win. Chattanooga has been a decent team in FCS in the past, though. Last year, however, they were only like 4-7 and seven or 3-8, and eight, something like that. And uh, I don't look for a lot from the mocks this year. So tell me what you think. Do you see any more losses than I do? Maybe you're smarter than me. Fill me in on it. Let's talk some Gamecock football in the comments section. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh.